probably the one of the best in the world comes from here. <laughs> Wait, babe, I think you drank too much. <laughs> Welcome to the Cavallan Distillery. And um, I was unaware of the fact that Taiwan actually developed one of the whiskeys that won the prize for the best whiskey in the world a few years ago in 2010. Here we're seeing some caskets and I wanted to share with you some of the things that we're learning about whiskey in this area. It's all. So, here they have a little bit of a presentation. Um, they say the best way to learn something is by teaching it. So let's go over some of the things that we learned. Water being such an important ingredient, 56% uh, of the uh, content of whiskey is water. And part of the reason they make such a fantastic whiskey is because they have the snow that melts from the mountains and they use that water through a particular process and the quality of the water really makes a huge uh, effect on the whiskey. Along so, with the proximity of the Pacific Ocean. Exactly, so it's a mixture of the weather, with the geographic patterns of the topography. The history of whiskey is very interesting. So everybody knows whiskey comes from Ireland and Scotland. Uh, part of the reason it happened to exist is because they, they used to drink spirits, but the spirits were of a clear color. Part of the reason whiskey has the color that it has is because they outlawed the sale of whiskey in that area for a while. And so in order to, to hide it, they hid it inside uh, the casks so people would know that they were whiskey. And as buyers would come to buy it, they started noticing the colors and the flavors and all these things, and that's what enhanced the flavors. And depending on where uh, the, the, the whiskey tradition developed, these things changed a little. So you have, have Scottish and Irish whiskey, you have American whiskey, Canadian, and Japanese. And those are all the whiskeys that most people know, but most people don't know about Taiwanese because it's, it's pretty new. It only started in 1979. And um, 30 years later, they already won the prize of the best whiskey in the world. So here, um, basically, you have whiskey that comes from grain and blends of uh, barley and malt. And it's a simple process. They get that, they mash it up with water, they ferment it with yeast, and once it has an alcohol content of about 7 to 8%, they then distill it. We're going to go over the distilleries. Uh, here they talk a little bit more about the barley and the, and the water and the yeast. So the, those are the three main components that make a whiskey whiskey. The water, you know, the catalyst for uh, being fermented, which is the barley and the malt. And then the yeast for the process. So when you come here and you smell the malt, it's actually, uh, it reminds me a little of that, of that uh, scent from uh, beer, you know? It's, it's, uh, it's a very uh, strong uh, fragrance. And here they have an example of the yeast that they're gonna mix into it. And here they show the process. So in a bit, we're gonna go take a look at the uh, distillation process, which basically is just a process of evaporation. They get the whole thing, it only has 7% alcohol, so they, as soon as they start heating it up, the alcohol will evaporate a lot faster than the water. They get that, and then they get that and distill it again to give it, give it even more of a concentration. So as I was saying earlier, when they first distill it, it comes out completely transparent. It looks like water. So the moment it comes out, the new make is completely transparent. And as it ages inside the barrel, it starts gaining color. One of the techniques that they use to also infuse color and flavor into the whiskey is burning the inside of the casket, and that gives it its own characteristics as well. There they are showing the process of burning the barrel. Now let's go take a look at the machinery.
here they're explaining the process of why they came up with the idea of starting a whiskey distillery in Taiwan. People were thinking, what are you guys going to do? You're going to compete with Scottish Irish whiskey that's been around for hundreds of years and start from scratch. You have no way of competing. And here they go into the whole thinking behind it and why they thought they'd be able to compete because of the tech, the water, and the, the ability to do things really well. But what I really like is the description of uh, the praise of the whiskey. So they're saying that their whiskey is eccentric and an ever-changing personality that could be as passionate as a Latina woman <laughs> and, as, and or as sweet as the girl next door. So I thought it was a very interesting description of the whiskey. As we try it and taste it, let's see if that's for real or not. So these first vats do the mashing. So what they do is they basically clump up all of the material that's gonna be fermented with water, mix it with hot water and let it sit so that it all mixes together so that it can start fermenting. It, the process takes about eight hours and it's uh, temperature control. Again, the water being one of the most important ingredients, it's already mixed with all of the yeasts that are going to be used. Then they start the fermentation process in which they dump it in here and keep it under control circumstances so that it starts creating alcohol. The bacteria start eating up the nutrients and it builds up an alcohol content from seven and a half to eight percent, which was surprising to me because I thought it would be a lot more alcoholic than that. From there, they start putting it in the copper uh, uh, bit vats, and the reason they use copper is because through the oxidation process, there could be a bit of a sulfur taste, and the copper not only is a good, a good uh, heat condu conductant, it also has the ability to avoid some of that sulfur taste in the process. So that's part of the reason that they use. They have several shapes and formats depending where it's being done. And it's simple. You have uh, this liquid now with about seven to eight percent alcohol, and they heat it up, and the alcohol evaporates much faster than the water. So it comes off the top, and that liquid then is very concentrated. And here's a picture of what it looks like. It's actually not that pretty at this point because it's just basically a lot of mashed up barley. Uh, that's that's being fermented, basically uh, being consumed by bacteria. And we're here you can see the alcohol being poured out. Let's zoom in on that. Can you see the? Yeah, you can see it vaguely. Um, so you can see the alcohol pouring out of the of the uh, bins, basically evaporating and then being concentrated. That's just the first process of distillation. Then they're going to get that liquid and do it again so that you have a, get an even stronger, uh, more concentrated uh, liquid, which then goes into the cask, which is going to absorb all of the content from within the cask. They say that more than 65% of the whiskey comes from the cask that you pick. And that's why they're very, very careful. Of about, the taste. Of, of, the, of the taste of the whiskey. Yeah. And that's why they're very careful about how uh, which casks they're going to select. So now we're getting to where they're storing all the whiskey. Now the fragrance, it's like a sweet whiskey, like you can almost taste it because it, it smells so strong. And as far as I can see, you have barrels and barrels and barrels of, uh, of whiskey just nonstop. You could drink for a lifetime here. <laughs> <laughs> and you have obviously different ages, and uh, obviously the older it is, the more expensive it is because it takes a much longer process to produce. And so now let's go taste it. Three different single malts that were aged in different kinds of barrels, and we get to blend them in a way that we like. So the first one is, has a stronger scent, it's a, it has a sl slighter, lesser alcohol content, and it's uh, vanilla mango pear. And then uh, the, the second one is berry marshmallow honey. And the third one is flower green apple banana. And you could really, if you let the scent into your nostrils, you could really feel a lot of the notes and the things that they're describing. I think those are good explanations. So we're gonna blend them and see what we come up with. I know where they want a price. So we're going to start by doing 
a third of each. Let's see what that comes out to. And it's cool to blend your own combination and then bottle it. So let's see what we come up with. So this one we just put half of the A and the B, which were the lighter notes. So it's not as, it doesn't have that much of a kick like the third one. Let's we'll see how that goes. Much smoother. The science part is fun. This one has that kick again. It's good. What's hard about uh, the, the tasting is that your palate changes as you're drinking. And when it seems hard on one, something becomes smooth as you drink more of it. But the flavors are interesting. You have to try this one. So let, now let's compare it with 50% A and 50% B. We just did 45, 45 and B with 10% C. So let's see how this one goes. This is a very fun experiment, let me tell you. So we're going to put mostly A and then split the rest with mostly B and then top it off with the kick of the smoky and the strong one in the C. And now I think we got it. Try this one because I think now we're on to something. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Wait, babe, I think you drank too much. <laughs> oh, look, 65. 65 plus, plus... 15, that's 80, plus 10 is 90, so we had 10% missing. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly, actually, let me try this one. It's so different to try it when you were with a zero palate versus when you're having to drink. So suddenly, it's like spice, you know? When you first have from scratch, it's much more of a punch in your face, but once you've had a couple, it's much smoother and then you feel much more of a flavor. Well, now I went complete reverse. I went for the really strong, oaky smoke taste with a higher alcohol content and a smaller amount of the easier notes. Um, the smoky taste seems to be a lot more persistent, so you don't feel it as much as in the beginning, but after flavor is very, very interesting. And it's interesting because you have different flavors you have right before you taste they have the scent, then the first flavor, then as it's in your mouth, then after you taste the lingering, the aftertaste. And then the persistence, you know, the flavor goes changing over time. So it's very interesting. It, it actually smells a lot sweeter than you would imagine. Hmm. Wow. This might potentially have Alter the tournament dramatically. <laughs> I was calling the other one the champ, but, I, but this might have just beat the champ. Try it. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> now I lost track of which one's the actual champ because I thought the champ was the one with the higher content. Yeah, that's what I thought. But I reversed it, so I'm not sure if the champ is this one or this one over here. This one was really good, and this one was overbearing. Are you sure? 100%. I'm certainly unsure. <laughs> As the tasting goes on, Roberto's math skills are getting progressively worse. Hey, what matters is the taste, not your, your science. 
So we just ran into a very tough conundrum because my favorite blend was 15%, 15%, 70, but they work in sixes and I guess we'll have to work with that. It is what it is. <laughs> hey, a six is around 15%. <laughs> <laughs> That solves it. There you go. One, one, and four. Beautiful bottle, too. Look at the packaging. Now we top it off. Strong, smoky, colorful. Okay, it changes the colors and makes it as well. Mm. There we go. It's to my dad. Here's a huge whiskey drinker. And so we call this Martin's Blend. Because it's bold, but funny and fruity. Oh, I like that. There we go.